say there's a kid like several in my ward that yeah. I am very aware of who who they seem like maybe they're happy or whatever but they're actually planning their suicide like oh, what advice would you give somebody would you say do do what I'm doing would you say do what he's doing um I would I would tell them um at, at this point in your life you know until you can get out of the house just just hold your breath just hold your breath and um, and then when you get away and I know people will shoot me for saying this but you know what you've got to find out you've got to find out if that's the lifestyle you want if you know date guys date girls do you know date both and see what works for you we live I think in a society now that is becoming more tolerant and even within the LDS community um, yeah you may be shunned you may be um, your parents may disown you but you know what there are going to be people out there that will love you and there will be people out there that will take care of you even if your immediate family doesn't right away eventually they'll realize what a stupid decision they made by being idiots and not supporting their child and um, you know giving them all the love that they can you know what it's like you said you were saying earlier oh you know it's like the parents say oh this it was so difficult for me well what the hell do you think the kid was going through parents need to realize that uh, that there's more to life than the image that they want their children to portray for them and I think once parents get over that things will be a lot easier who cares what the neighbors think? Who cares what the neighbors... How have your parents felt about it? Um, well, that's, that's an interesting story. When I, was building, when I was building my house, I remember he, I was over at a boyfriend's house. Look, I had the blueprints out in front of me, and I was talking to my dad. And I was like, Dad, I don't know what to do. You know, here's a problem. I need to move this wall, blah, blah, blah. And, and uh, he said, well, you need to remember that when you get married, and if you get married to a girl, that there's going to be things that she wants. And that was all I heard. <laughs> I was like, okay, thanks. And I don't remember anything else the rest of that night. In just uh, the past few years, every, every Christmas I've been writing um, letters to my mom every day for like Christmas, you know, like the 12 days of Christmas. Instead of the 12 days, I've done the, you know, the 20 days before Christmas. So I would, I would start writing cards in November about, about my life and, you know, what the whole cancer experience has been and things that I'd gone through and, you know, every day I'd send a card. Um, and in one of those, uh, one of them I had talked about my struggle uh, with a girlfriend and how would it work, um, you know, being attracted to guys, and I thought, you know, she's perfect because she loved me, and she knows, she knew everything about me, um, and, you know, our relationship, our friendship relationship um, was, um, I called it brutal honesty, because we just, we both said things exactly how we felt, and we didn't hide anything from each other, and I thought, oh my gosh, this, uh, this could work with her. Um, and so I shared that with my mom. I mean, I'm, I, I'm a pretty happy person. I mean, I'm, I'm really happy. Yeah, I have, there are things in life that, that really suck. Um, and I, I have moments and days when, when the loneliness are overwhelming, but, uh, I don't, I mean, I don't feel like I'm totally alone. What happens after, after this, I believe, I b believe that there's life after this. I believe that we'll meet up with friends and family and people that we've known and um, I don't know the exact organization of what it will be like but uh, I don't think it all I don't think it all ends now I think that's I think that's crazy uh, just there's too much there's too much for it to end all of a sudden you know as I'm getting older and uh, being alone it's you know it's a it's a constant struggle to to think that I'm gonna be by myself, you know, the rest of my life, you know, and there there have been some people that I know of, not only in my ward, but 
you know, other active LDS people that have, you know, when they hit 55, 56, I think one of them had just turned 55, he divorced his wife and moved moved away with a guy and it, and it was a total shock and it's like, oh my gosh, you know, people, um, everyone's endurance for pain, whether it be physical or emotional pain, um, has, has limits and, um, and I don't, I don't know, uh, you know, what my limit is on that. I don't know what the loneliness limit is, is, um, you know, I've made commitments and I hope that, that I can be strong enough to keep the commitments that, I, that I've made and, uh, but I worry about that. I don't. I don't want to be one of these people that all of a sudden just gives in. That's that's not me. But I'm afraid that you know is the is the mental anguish. Is there a point where the mental anguish kind of takes over rational thinking? You know, I don't know, and it it, it makes me nervous because I don't want to be. I don't want to be flaky. I don't want to be flaky one way or another. If I make a decision, I'm. That's what I want to do. But do you think it's okay to change your mind about something or no? Yeah, uh, yeah. Because I mean, you already have. Right. Like once. Right. Um, because you feel that that's the right thing at the time. Right. And I guess that's a good disclaimer. Is you know if you know if if things change, you know um, beliefs or whatever you know because be beliefs are evolutionary. You know they change. Um, As you get older, for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely. I look at you and and the people that you have around you, and you have a lot of people around you that do love that love you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is hard not to have that person to come home to and get in bed with, and just be like, I feel safe and warm, right. and I'm tired, and somebody who's going to understand, it doesn't have to say anything, I'm just right. home. You know, that's that's a good feeling. But even even if you were fully out and free to do whatever you wanted, you still might not find that. Right. So, like, there are no guarantees in life. Right. But. Yeah, and, and it, up to this point in my life, there's, I mean, maybe three people that I could, that I could see fit my qualifications for a husband. I mean, that's not many. It only takes one who's willing. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I, you know, and one, one concern that I'll that I'll express to you, and I, you can leave this in if you want to, but I've, you know, as as you have, as you have made your decisions, I have worried about what you think about me and and the decisions I make, and I know, and I know it's stupid, but I have always, I've always cared for you. And as you've been doing this project, I just, I've always been like, oh my gosh, I hope Don doesn't think that I'm, um, uh, what's the word, two-faced or, or whatever, you know, with the decisions that I've made. Because I respect you and respect how you feel, uh, you know, and, and you've, you've lived a, a good life and a lot of experiences. And so that's, that's always worried me. And it's always, it's always been there. I know it's stupid. I, I know so it's stupid. don't judge you, Dave. I know, and I know. And you everybody's don't. life experience is different, right. so there isn't a right answer. Yeah, but that's always worried me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dave. Oh, because I love you. I think you're awesome. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome. That was everything. Cut this together and. Oh, you're funny.